Good morning. Just off on my morning walk here and wanted to share a few thoughts on a conversation that I, it appears I started yesterday regarding the impending new Bitcoin Cash fork. I did a tweet saying that based upon an announcement that the Bitcoin Cash node team was making, that's the new Bitcoin Cash node that was put together before the last fork, basically in opposition to the infrastructure funding plan that was being proposed by some miners and then implemented into Bitcoin ABC's code, uh, that they were making an announcement that they were making some, some changes that the potential knock-on effect of those would be falling out of consensus with Bitcoin ABC and therefore forking. And my tweet, obviously provocative and meant to provoke a conversation, was that Bitcoin Cash Node, with that announcement, was basically announcing that they were going to fork in November during the next uh, hard fork event, the next upgrade event. And I just wanted to, to share some thoughts. Some people are accusing me of spreading FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And I'd like to reframe that a little bit and speak about my intent in this regard. And my intent is actually to do the exact opposite. It is to give people a view of what's coming down the road with enough time to plan and to alter their behaviors or to make financial or uh, business decisions that there isn't a need for fear, uncertainty, or doubt. Just as with any other event that's potentially disruptive, if you see it coming from a far distance away, you have an early warning sign for tornadoes, hurricanes, asteroids about to hit whatever it is then you know there's got to be there's going to be much less fear uncertainty and doubt because you can actually do something about it and that's what i really hope to to be able to provide and in terms of uh whether or not this is the case i think that we will see it play out there are people who are obviously going to argue that no 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 vin is vin is overreacting uh, Vin is a shit starter. It's interesting. Those are uh, that's an exact quote from uh, a gentleman named Craig Wright. When I two years ago, mid June, exactly as this is mid June, said, "Yeah, it looks like Enchain and CoinGeek want to split the chain based on these weird announcements that they're making of changes that they're going to make." And almost universally, people said, "Oh no, no, this." They have no incentive to do that. They have no incentive to, to fork. That doesn't make any sense, Vin. Um, if you want to go back and watch, it's kind of really funny because it didn't really age well for them. But the guys who were at that time called the BCH Boys, who are now called Bitcoin Beyond, spent a whole hour with me where I was trying to explain to them why this was the case and them trying to argue that it wasn't. Uh, we see how that video aged. That's on YouTube, if, on their channel, if you want to watch it. Um... I, so what I want to do, though, is, you know, my intent in this regard is not for us to repeat the past, not for us to repeat the fork that was the BTC BCH fork and the acrimony involved there, not to go back and redo the situation with SV, which had we addressed it in June probably wouldn't have been as bad, and to hopefully be able to have this fork in a way that's much more amicable. We saw what the hash war did, right? Even you go back to my the video that I did saying, hey, this is what Craig and Calvin are about to do. I did a whole video about it because nobody knew what was going to happen or, or people weren't expecting it. Even Roger Veer at that time was saying, oh, I think it'll be like Y2K and there won't really be anything. That's his exact quote. His exact quote in the video after Craig Wright had sent him a threatening letter. I think it'll just be like Y2K. Nothing to worry about, you know, and then he had to spend millions fighting a hash war. If it would have been addressed in June, then it could have been a totally different situation. And so, you know, we can address that now. I want to share three ideas. I'm not going to dwell on them, but these are three ideas that help me to frame and help me to know what's going to come next in Bitcoin. And so I just want to share those with you as we move forward in this conversation. So the first thing is that Bitcoin is a social 
project and it's not a technical project. The technical aspects of Bitcoin are implementations of social preferences. So the idea with Bitcoin is that it's bringing people together and it's about trust. And trust is a social phenomenon and it's the most important social phenomenon when it comes to money. As, as a matter of fact, money is a specifically a tool that is about trust. And this is something I've been writing about, studying, and it'll be a big part of my next book. But it's something to always keep in mind that although we can talk about technical aspects, really those technical aspects are implementations of social preferences. So really what's really at play are, are, are social mechanisms. So the second thing is that the that not being in consensus is the default position. It's the default position of humanity. So that is to say that agreeing with someone is actually much more rare, or being in consensus or communion, sharing the same culture, is actually much more rare than uh, not being in consensus. Meaning, if you take me and you just pick any random person in the world, the chances that that person shares my ideals, my ideology, my culture, my preferences for food, my preferences for, uh, you know, aesthetics, all of those things is probably, it's, it's basically nil. The, the people who are exactly like you in terms of your preferences and, and are in consensus with you about the way the world is and your worldview, it's next to nobody on earth. So solving a problem of bringing people into consensus is a very difficult problem and you got to remember that the default is entropy. The default is that people will fall out of consensus at the first opportunity. All you got to do is look around at your country, look around at the political parties, people living right next to each other who are diametrically opposed to each other in terms of their worldview. And then the third thing is that in Bitcoin, anything that can be tried will be tried. Anything that is within the bounds of possibilities, someone is going to try and experiment. And nowhere is that more true than in Bitcoin Cash. So it's funny that the same people who say, oh, oh, nobody will try to fork, nobody will try to do X, Y, Z, are the exact same people who spend their days trying to do arcane things in script and say, ooh, look at this, oh my God, look at this cool thing I just figured out how to do. And it's like, yo, dude, you, <laughs> you're anything that can be tried, you're trying it, but yet you have a blind spot when it comes to the social. And again, that goes back to number one. And so with that in mind, and us moving forward on this conversation, this is not about fear, uncertainty, and doubt. What this is about is we can, forks are gonna happen, right? This is, a, this is the nature of Bitcoin. Even when Satoshi says nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, he's basically implicitly saying that these situations will happen. And because the nature of human beings is to fall out of consensus, we should expect that if there is an opportunity, it will happen. And that's what's about to occur. And what I see is, you know, when I called out that Enchain and CoinGeek in June, mid-June of 2018, when I said, these guys are gonna split the network, they have an intent to fork, we had a unified community. We were coming off the CoinGeek conference, people were fired up, people were big on BCH, just completely unified. And yet in November, fork. The situation now in Bitcoin Cash is, whew, it's a powder keg, man. It's a powder keg. There's, there's so much hate that's been fomented and financed and continues to be. And there are people with big incentives to keep that, that hate and that drama going. Um, and so to say that, that it's not a more volatile situation than the situation that led to the SV fork is crazy. And the moves that are being made are moves that are, would only need to be done if, in, if you were either planning knowingly or not knowingly. Again, that's the most important part. Anything that can be done will be done. So if you allow it to be done, it will be done. So if you set up a scenario where something can happen, you are planning for that thing to happen. That's how Bitcoin works. That's how it works. And there are those within an incentive to have a fork. And there are those with an incentive to have a fork who have commit access in the important places, and that's where it counts. We saw what happened with the SV fork. 
We saw what happened with the BTC BCH fork. The acrimony, the uncertainty in the market, the lack of confidence that's created, those are all deadly to every to the price of every coin. Had SV not done a hash war and had they just done an amicable split and said, we're leaving, this is the consensus rules that we want, whoever wants to come, come, we wish the other guys well, I would wager right now SV would have a higher market cap than BCH, especially since they have shown that they're willing to do market manipulation. There's no doubt in my mind that they would have a higher market cap. No doubt. And Craig might not even be as like... Uh, he might not even be in as much trouble socially in terms of his reputation, although, I don't know, he pro probably would be. But needless to say, it would be better for everybody involved in SV had they gone the amicable route. And so I want people to think about, like, what's really valuable? Because if there's going to be a battle, it's going to be a battle just like it was with SV. It's going to be a battle over the ticker. And I think both sides should really think about whether or not the ticker is really all that valuable. I think that's a question to ask yourself as you move forward. Because if there's no battle over the ticker, there can be an amicable split. And if there's an amicable split, it can actually be better for both sides. It can be better for the price of BCH overall. For the investors, for the developers, it gives more options. And if we do this right, it can give more security. It can give more certainty. So I'm not trying to spread fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I'm trying to do the exact opposite. I'm trying to be an early warning sign that we could get to a situation where there's lots of fear, uncertainty, and doubt, but we don't have to if we address this now. So that's the message that, that I wanted to have. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Thanks for listening.